Bittner, Michael's a political columnist and writer. Michael, thank you so much for your time. What does it mean to be a Nazi in Germany these days? Well, it means what it always meant. Uh, there are some neo-Nazis in Germany who are uh, convinced that the National Socialist ideology is correct, that hate Jews, uh, hate Muslims, hate homosexuals, and uh, commit violent acts against them. Is the far right a permanent presence in Germany now, do you think? Or is there something very particular about these past few years that has helped them become more popular and emboldened people to speak out the way that surely they would not have done in the few couple of decades after World War II? I mean, the Nazis were always there. Uh, but in recent years, uh, especially after 2015, when a lot of... Uh, uh, refugees from Syria uh, came into Germany, uh, they became louder, uh, they uh, became more violent, there were a lot of uh, attacks on immigrants, and the AFD was founded, a party which originally was a rather conservative party, but now has turned into a radical right party with neo-Nazis in it, uh, like Björn Höcke, the leader of this party in Thuringia. Uh, in Saxony, this party is also radical right party. So this is what has changed. They have become louder. They were always there, but they have become louder and more violent in recent years. Michael, who joins these groups? I want to use the example of uh, football hooligans in the United Kingdom. And many people consider them, and it's disparaging of working class people, but many people say, oh, that person must be a working class, uneducated person if they're going to a football match on Saturday and they're drinking and they're having fights and even pulling out knives and beating people up just because they support another club. That's the impression that a lot of people might have about a Nazi, that it's someone who's not educated, someone who's lacking something. Is that the case, or are these people kind of normal office workers, which actually hooligans in the UK are? During the week, they'll wear a suit, they'll sit behind a desk, work on a computer, and then at the weekend, they'll go and beat someone up at a football game. I would say that the theory that uh, these are all poor people who uh, become Nazis because they're so desperate is obviously not true. If you look at these people, there are some who come from a working class background, but if you look at the AFD uh, leaders, they're all coming from the elite. Uh, most of the people sitting in parliaments for the AFD are uh, rather rich people, rather well-educated people. So this is not an explanation. The ideology of uh, right-wing extremism appeals to people from all social classes, from poor people to middle class to elite people. And for those political leaders, is it that they're tapping into some sort of populism, that they're using it just to build their own political platforms? It's been said about uh, the Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban, that actually he started out as quite a reasonable person. But when he realized how his populist anti-migrant rhetoric was helping him to become more popular and consolidate his position, he just went further and further with it. And now some people would say that actually he's a Nazi as well. Well, you can look at uh, historical fascism or national socialism. Uh, the combination of nationalism and the promise of social welfare is extremely popular and it is still today. So you can, uh, you can have great success if you combine these two uh, elements of ideology. Uh, and there are a lot of leaders in the world who use this at the moment. Also Donald Trump in America or Erdogan in Turkey. Cool, really appreciate it. Michael Bittner speaking to us from Berlin.